Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood, and you are watching the Political Vigilante, folks. Thank you for watching us on, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, we've been demonetized for many, many months now. So please go support us at rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood or patreon.com slash Graham Elwood. We have a Venmo, we have a PayPal, you can go to grahamelwood.com. We've got tour dates, we've got some merchandise. A lot of our tour got canceled in October, but we're going to be in California um, in September 11th through the 18th doing four shows. So check that out. Um, so. Obviously, we've heard about uh, Hurricane Ida and the havoc that it's wreaked in, you know, Louisiana and some southern states all the way on off to the uh, the northeast. And <laughs> so to see the corporate media cover this, so to say everything the media says is fake news or whatever, no, I don't, I don't subscribe to that. But the, how they cover stuff is always really important. And this article that I got from marketwatch.com, as capitalist as they come, is shaming victims of this for not having flood insurance. That's all this article taught. And that's the headline. Look at this headline. Ida caused an estimated $24 billion in damage in the Northeast, but a dismal number of people were insured for flooding. So out of the, the, the clickbait title, so now they're changing. So we're not, what this article does not cover, take a guess. Um, the United States government has done nothing, nothing significant about climate change, despite the fact scientists have been screaming about it for about four decades, at least, four, at least since the 80s, if not sooner, right? Screaming about it. It doesn't talk about how this country's been gutted financially. We just had the largest upwards transference of market watch is not going to talk about how wall street made out like bandits during this pandemic. They're not going to talk about that. They're not going to talk about that. They're really not. Um, and so now they're doing that thing that they, they love, we love to do in capitalism. We shame the people who are too poor or too just struggling, just the working poor, the working class who can't afford flood insurance. Ah, it's your fault. You should have had flood insurance. I'm sorry. Wait a minute. You didn't give Americans. What if Americans had free health care? They probably could afford maybe flood insurance in the country that has these the uh the number one cause of bankruptcy in America is medical debt, right? We know this. If you watch this show, you know that. The number one cause of bankruptcy, right? Medical debt. The how many people die every year because they don't have health insurance? 40,000, 50. I hear I hear as, as big as 60 sometimes. I mean, it's nuts. At least 40,000 people die every year because they don't have health insurance. People die because they don't have health insurance. So if people can't afford health insurance, they're not supposed to have flood insurance. And we talked about this in Government Secrets with Lee Camp. We talked about Hurricane uh, Katrina. So the the fuel in this, this article won't talk about this either. The fossil fuel companies have gutted a lot of the land, these, I forget what they're called, they're like marshes or whatever, that are really good at absorbing floodwaters. That's what their the, mother nature had a pretty good system. They gutted it to make it easier for oil tankers to come up in Louisiana. So there's all, they're, they're not talking about any of that, any of the man made problems that have made natural disasters like this worse. It's not talking about this at all. When an inconvenient truth came out in 2003 or 2004, Al Gore said, we're going to have flooding in New York city. We're going to have flooding at the world trade center. That's happened already several times. Hurricane Sandy's had it, but this is the coverage. Ah, uh, at your fault. You should have had, you should have had insurance. Really? It's my fault that the United States military has spent three and a half trillion dollars in Afghanistan for 20 years. And now it's worse And the Afghanistan and the Taliban have a bunch of American weapons now. So the only two people that benefited from the 20 year war in Afghanistan were defense contractors and the Taliban. 
And the United States military, you're like, Graham, what does Afghanistan have to do with this? Well, A, that money could have been going for infrastructure to plan ahead for hurricanes, to plan ahead for fire. We have, The West Coast is on fire, right? Yes, hurricanes just happen. We can't control them. But we can control the infrastructure to handle the floodwaters better. But we spent that money in Afghanistan, right? And who's the number one polluter of the inner, of the environment? Oh, the United States military. So we know that climate change does not create hurricanes, but it makes them stronger and worse. So what should have just been like a category one or a category two, now thanks to climate change, is becoming a three and a four, basically. that's I'm, I'm oversimplifying it, but that's how it's climate scientists have explained this. So this article doesn't go about any of that. It's basically your fault for not having insurance. Sure, the oil industry and the drilling companies and the fracking and the shipping, they've gutted the this, the infrastructure. We haven't spent a nickel on infrastructure because it's all gone to these, you know, the nine, what, how many trillions of dollars in Iraq and Afghanistan? Oh, we've always got money for war. We're not talking about any of the pipelines built across America that have destabilized the environments. We're not talking about any of that at all. Did we learn anything from Katrina in 2005? Nope. Hurricane Sandy that hit the East Coast? Nope. Here's this bullshit article. New estimates from property information company CoreLogic suggest that the tropical storm caused 16 to 24 billion in damage to residential and commercial buildings in the Northeast alone. That's on top of the 27 billion to 40 billion in losses caused by the storm when it struck Louisiana and Mississippi as a major hurricane. This is the other thing this article isn't talking about. It hit Louisiana as a major hurricane and when it made, usually when hurricanes hit landfall, they disintegrate, right? They dissipate. They become just sort of a, a tropical storm, maybe kind of heavy rains and wind. It stayed a hurricane as it traveled up to the Northeast. That's scary. So what if it went North? Is Cincinnati, is Indianapolis, is Chicago? Are you guys ready for this? It doesn't sound like the East Coast was. But you got big developments. You got hotel casinos. What do you got? You got you ready for the hurricane? A bunch of people lost their homes. Where are they going to go? Oh, by the way, the eviction moratorium just ended and so did unemployment benefits. But that's not mentioned in this article. Weird. Market watch. Ah, I guess they just got busy doing other stuff. Only a fraction of the damage inflicted in the Northeast was insured, however. Oh, your fault. Not, we're not going to get at the cause of why the infrastructure is the flooding. They haven't put any money into dealing with any of this. You know, her hurricanes are coming every year. We saw what happened in Katrina in 2005, 16 years ago. You would think since Katrina, oh boy, we've spent all this money in the infrastructure. So now when these hurricanes come, we can handle it. Nope. Do we have a pipeline? all over the country for water. So when there's flooding, we can just immediately get that water out of there and drain these communities. No, because the oil companies don't make money that way. I've talked about this since I've been doing this show. What if we had, again, I'm not a civil engineer, right? but it seems like reasonable, right? A pipe. So imagine all this flooding, Louisiana, Mississippi, all the way up the Northeast. What if we had a pipeline system took that water out of there. So we're draining it now. We're draining these communities and we're sending it to, God, is there a part of the country that's really dry and on fire right now? Oh, the whole West Coast. Or maybe up to our neighbors in Canada. Any drought areas anywhere? Firefighters need any water? Boom. Are there any countries that need it? Let's put it on water tankers, not oil tankers. Because that's the other thing this article doesn't go into. Oh, by the way, there's some oil spills in the Gulf as a result of this. What if we got off of oil? What if we had water tankers and so they just spilled water back into the Gulf? Okay. Now we've got oil. Great. More contaminated marine life. Any shrimp, shrimp fishermen, fishermen, shrimpers, whatever in the Gulf? Oh, by the way, your cash crop is now contaminated. 
not to mention the ill effects for the environment. How do I have more solutions than the dipshits in charge of this dumb country? And if you're new to the show, I ain't just talking about the Democrats, the Democrats and Republicans and the corporations that they actually work for. Wall Street doesn't plan ahead. Wall Street, literally big corporations don't even think about a 10-year model, five-year model. They just think about the next tax, the next quarter, the next quarter stocks. What's the, do we, did, did, do we have third quarter profits? And we have profits going into the fourth quarter? Great. What about next year? Shut your mouth. That's how the corporate America works. So there's no pre-planning. So we know hurricanes are coming every year, every year. Wildfires come to the West coast every year. Should we plan for it? I don't know. Is that good for business? The good news for some properly for property owners is that Superstorm Sandy, which hit New York and New Jersey in 2012, prompted many to invest in resilience projects that likely helped them to avoid worse damage as a result of Ida. So again, there. do you see the language? I want to make this very clear. You didn't get insurance. You're an idiot. Those property owners that did, they were fine. So again, they're putting the onus on you, the individual. No complaints of the government and the corporations in both political parties that have let this happen and have gutted America. So we're not ready for these disasters. We have when they and they come, we always act so surprised. Every, we have a hurricane season, but we're not ready for it. We have a fire season, but we're not ready for it. Hey, all of you living in cold in, in, in the northern part of the hemisphere. Do you just throw away your winter jackets every spring? And then are you just walking outside barefoot and flip-flops when the first snowstorm hits in, the, in December and going, oh, did this happen? Or do you plan like we, right? We, we can only plan so much regular people. The ruling class, which owns the government and both political parties and all of the media and the courts, they don't even plan. Remember when the when the COVID hit and all these corporations were like, we're out of money. And aren't, aren't they the corporations always telling all of us, boy, you should have a rainy day fund. You should have three to six months savings. Big corporations didn't. And they needed trillions of dollars in stimulus money. So they're not prepared, but we're supposed to, according to Market Watch. So that's the lesson. I mean, Honestly, this is the lesson. Market Watch is inadvertently telling you your government ain't going to help you. They don't give a shit about you. You got to do it yourself. If you don't have the money to have a levy built in your backyard, um, you got to move, I guess. Like, that's the other thing. They tell, well, people should just move from those regions. What do you mean? That's where their family's from, that's where they grew up. What's the government going to do? What's the plan? Are we going to just evacuate New Orleans and Mississippi and Florida? And I've done stories on that. Florida is going to be underwater. Miami, like, well, I, what, what are we going to do? Where, where's everybody going to live? I don't know. You should have had insurance. That's what the corporate media thinks. Democrats, Republicans, it makes no difference. They don't care about you. So I don't know what you got to do. Make noise, do something. This is what happens when you vote. Any blue will do because the Democrats have control of the House and Senate. They're running out of time because by 2022, they're going to get voted out. So come January 23, which is in about a year and a half, they're not going to have control anymore. So what the Democrats could be doing is passing sweeping environment. This infrastructure bill has some environmental stuff in it. It's too, it's, it's not enough. We need the federal government to say, this has to stop. We got to do something nationwide. Now we got to put every American to work. We got to, there's people out there doing good work, but that's just too small. There's people doing coral restoration. There's people like doing all kinds of things, putting in the natural um, you know, wildlife or, or I don't know what you want to call it, flora and fauna to absorb floods that was already there. Like 
in Louisiana. But no, we let business gut it. We need shipping routes for oil. We got it. We're done. We got to get off of oil. It's, it has to happen. Then it can't be like 2045. It mean like now, like we need to be off of oil in like three years done. All these videos that I've done on this show, algae pulling CO2 out of the air, Oliveira, this mineral you put on the beach. I've talked about this time and time again, the federal government, all of these products, there's, pro there's already work done, being done. It just needs big mass scale money. It's what it needs. Unfortunately, climate change is a top-down solution. That We can only do a top-down solution. It can't be grassroots. Yeah, but Joe Biden's better for the environment than Trump. Yeah, by about that much. And that much isn't going to do dick. That's not going to, that's not enough. Yeah, Trump was awful. A whole cabinet full of climate deniers. Absolutely. But then what does the Democratic Party do? They go after people like Bernie Sanders, who had a real Green New Deal. Oh, Tulsi Gabbard had a Green New Deal. They had, a real, they had real Green New Deals, and they went after them. And then those two quit, of course, because they, they buckle. They worry about their political career. When Bernie Sanders said, I don't want to be like Ralph Nader. Well, well, thanks, Bernie, because now we got nothing. These are your leaders. The squad's not doing anything. I mean, they're going to tweet. They're going to put some tweets out there. They're going to give a nice, big, performative speech about the Republicans. We don't care about blah, blah, blah. blah. But they could do it. They have the House and the Senate and the White House. They should just be like, hey, Republicans and oil companies, fuck you. We're doing what we want to save the planet. But they can't because they get money from the same corporations that the Republicans do. Go to OpenSecrets.org. Follow the money, connect the dots, get the truth. It's the only way we're going to save this planet. Or we can bitch about petty, stupid things while everything collapses. You know, like the end of uh, Dr. Strangelove. Shave your knuckles for justice. Boom. Hey, everybody. Ron Placone and I had to cancel all of our October tour dates because of uh, COVID, the Delta variant, all that. But we still have shows in California. Ron and I are doing San Francisco, September 11th, Sacramento, September 12th, Burbank, September 15th. And Lee Camp and I are doing live government secrets, September 18th in Los Angeles. All those tour dates are at GrahamElwood.com. All of the venues are requiring proof of vaccination. Dynasty typewriter on the 18th is also saying you can do negative COVID tests, but check with the venues for what their policies are. I have no control over those policies. Go to GrahamElwood.com. Sorry we can't come. This sucks. We'll be back hopefully next year. But if you're in California or want to make the trip, come out to these shows. These are probably the only shows we're going to do this year. Thank you.